published 1643 edt the 1st of september 2017 updated 1856 edt the 1st of september 2017 the idea that gareth southgate intended to select wayne rooney in his squad for this encounter only for the former england captain to tell him that as much as he appreciated the offer he was retiring from international football was met with a fair amount of skepticism last week and understandably so. It smacked of being the one final indulgence of an immensely gifted but often troublesome England footballer. By Friday night, however, it was starting to look like something of a master stroke the conclusion to a carefully orchestrated campaign, and one for which England's manager actually deserves some credit. Wayne Rooney was part of an England generation that displayed quality and Steel Southgate might have denied that the late-night drinking session at the England team hotel last November would be Rooney's last act as an international footballer but it turns out it was. And when Rooney chose the day of an England match to get himself arrested and charged with drink driving, the decision to quietly ease him out of the England setup was more than vindicated. Rooney can still reflect on a fine career, but the culture of his sport has changed and increasingly, at the very highest level anyway, there is no place for footballers who seemingly seize every opportunity to have a drink. As Rooney's powers have waned the game has accelerated with rising levels of athleticism and professionalism, those two recent goals for Everton only disguising the fact that at 31 he is no longer the force he once was. Rooney's generation fell short but at least dared to succeed on the international stage. Rooney has not played for his country since a 30 win over Scotland at Wembley in November. The challenge nevertheless remains for Southgate to unearth from this new generation of players the energy and desire Rooney once possessed in an England shirt. Not to mention the raw, clinical talent. Rooney was part of a generation that ultimately fell short of its own high expectations but there were moments, at least, when they threatened to succeed on the international stage. Sure, such moments were isolated, Michael Owen in Munich on this day in 2001. David Beckham against Greece a year later. Rooney at Euro 2004, Steven Gerrard and Frank Lampard, although never quite at the same time. John Terry and Rio Ferdinand would often excel at the heart of the England defence. Gareth Southgate watched his side labour to a 40 World Cup qualifying win in Malta. Ashley Cole was simply outstanding against Cristiano Ronaldo. Ditto Owen Hargreaves against Portugal. Even Theo Wall caught away to Croatia. But the fact remains they had the moments and it is more than can be said, rather worryingly, about a group of young players so far unable to perform with anything even approaching the urgency and panache the predecessors occasionally demonstrated. Indeed, this England side Southgate inherited all too quickly from Sam Allardyce still seemed to be suffering from the malaise of Euro 2016 and the debilitating, confidence-crushing defeat to Iceland. At club level, of course, they appear to suffer no such difficulties. Jordan Henderson captained Liverpool to a thumping 40 defeat of Arsenal last week. Harry Kane, while continuing to give August a miss, has been consistently excellent for Tottenham. Other players here in Malta on Friday night have done enough to command huge fees in the most recent transfer window. Harry Kane slots past Malta goalkeeper Andrew Hogg to make it 40 in stoppage time. England's young players are struggling to play with the urgency or panache of previous sides but throw them together in an England team and they undergo a quite bizarre transformation, losing the swagger as well as the momentum as if someone has flicked a switch behind one ear. Perhaps a World Cup qualifier in front of 15,000 largely unimpressed fans here in Malta just doesn't stir the collective juices in a way a clash at Anfield can. Maybe that's understandable. But as they stumble to victory against a side beaten 51 by Scotland here only a year ago Southgate must have been wondering what the hell he does next however professional a job he claimed his side had done afterwards, he has recruited the world's greatest striker coach. He has even brought in a guru from the all-conquering All Blacks. He has preached the importance of uncovering new leaders to replace Rooney. Marcus Rashford and co stumbled and spluttered against meagre opposition away from home about nine months out from the World Cup and the signs of genuine progress are scarce. Nine months before what remains a likely trip to Russia and this England team are desperately poor travellers as well as a side that have also been less than convincing at Wembley. On Friday night many England supporters had decided to return to a Mediterranean bar long before that late flurry of goals made the scoreline more respectable.
It was a puzzling performance, Southgate's decision to select two holding midfielders against opposition of this modest level, one that certainly demanded an explanation when it did not lend itself to a fluent, dominant display. Jordan Henderson captained England as the path to the World Cup remained on track England got there in the end, of course, Kane easing the sense of anxiety with the first of four England goals in the 53rd minute. England's fans had it about right, though, mischievously responding to Kane's strike by celebrating that we've had a shot. The truth is there remains a desperate need for improvement and a need to bridge that between themselves and teams like France, Germany and Spain, after this rising to the standards once set by Rooney and some of his former international colleagues would be a start.